What's going on guys? Spencer here with HM Massage back with another video. Today we are doing a thorough hand massage with a little bit of forearm work as well. In this hand massage, I'm going to show how to work into the nooks and crannies of the carpal bones and the hands, and then working of course over to the thumb pad, and really how to work all of these intricate areas that can often get overlooked in a massage. All of this work can help deal with carpal tunnel, wrist pain, hand pain, and even elbow pain such as golfer's elbow or tennis elbow. As a massage therapist, whenever I get a massage, I have to have my hands worked and my forearms worked, and there's a lot of times that I've asked for hand work, and the therapist will work on your hands for like one minute. So there's a lot of massages where I haven't really gotten the thorough focus work that the hands really truly need. So that's what we're going to go over today, and I'm going to show you guys the muscles that we'll be working in between each of these fingers. So these muscles in between each of the fingers are called your lumbricals. And those lumbricals lead into the palmar interossei, which is the tendinous connective tissue of the palm that you'll also find in between each of those hand bones. So you see that I'm spreading each of these metacarpals and any area that I feel stuck, I'm really spending some extra time there. I'm starting distally away from the body and working proximally. So we're working towards the person, and I'm really just spending my time finding these squished hand bones, the metacarpals, and spreading them out and really digging in there using a little bit of vibration and a little bit of rhythmic friction, doing some circles. But there is going to be a lot of graininess, a lot of crepitus. These hands are going to get stuck and everybody's hands are overworked. We live in a time of cell phones and computers. So this is gonna be a favorite of your clients, and I know a lot of my clients love this extra hand work. So we're working the palmar interossei and the lumbricals in between each of the metacarpals, and we're making our way over to the thumb. And the thumb is going to have some big meaty muscles that we need to work. We have the adductor pollicis, which is going to bring your thumb into the hand. Then we have the abductor pollicis brevis, which brings your thumb away from the hand. And then you have the flexor pollicis brevis, which helps flex your thumb down. And if these muscles are hurting your hand too much, it makes it hard to like this video and subscribe to the channel which you should do. And I'm going to follow this same pattern, starting away from the thumb, working each of those metacarpals, and then gradually heading towards the thumb pad until the hand starts feeling much looser. This trigger point I'm holding here is right where the meaty part between your thumb and pointer finger meets up with the rest of these thumb muscles. And this is going to be so tender on so many people. I really like to spend a lot of time here. You can see how long I'm holding this spot. And it's going to create such a relief, a, such a nice feeling for the client once you're done with it because their hand is going to feel so open, so free, and it's not going to hurt. The thumb has a lot of muscles attaching to it, which is what gives it such great range of motion and the famous opposable thumbs, but it also can be quite tender, and we tend to overuse our thumbs, and massage therapists tend to overuse their thumbs, which you all know I'm a huge advocate against. After I felt the meaty part of the thumb and finger releasing, I then moved into more of the actual thumb pad and did some nice deep slow work there. This is primarily abductor pollicis brevis, which is a very strong muscle, 
that then attaches to the retinaculum of the wrist as well. This move especially can help create space amongst the carpal tunnel. With the biggest thing in mind here is just you have to go slow. You have to really give the time to sink into these hand muscles. But I took my time, I ran through each of the metacarpals and then worked the thumb. And now I'm bringing it out and we're going to work the forearm because the forearm and the hand are so connected. In fact, most of the forearm muscles just run into tendons that attach on the hand and fingers. So it is imperative that you also work the forearm, the flexors, and the extensors on the top as well. I love this flexor glide technique because you can see the fingers compress and then as you work towards their body, you can see the fingers relax and let go. I'll start with my knuckle, but I'm no stranger to working deep on the forearms, so I'll follow through with the elbow of course, because elbows are what saves our hands in the long run. So get that elbow in there, make sure you know where your olecranon process is pressing into, that's the point of the elbow, but if somebody has tight muscles or strong forearm muscles, they are going to absolutely love this work. And as I said, I've had a lot of massages where I need this work and I don't quite get it, so if you are the one that is willing to give this work to a client, they are going to love you. You can see right there just how slow I went and how much I held the CFT, that's the common flexor tendon. Sometimes you have to go slower than you think you would need to. And feel free to play around with your forearm and elbow angles. Here I switch to my other elbow, and this allows me to change my body posture, as well as just get a slightly different variation on a deep friction stroke. After finishing, I cool down with petrissage, just some lifting, squeezing, and then a little bit of effleurage, a nice light gliding to cool down the body before we then proceed with other muscles. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video and it helped you out. Give it a thumbs up if you did and subscribe to the channel for more content. I will see you guys on the next one. I hope you have a great rest of your day.